Well, hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to Manor Lords, where today we're taking a deep look at some of the things that the game has to offer for food and farming, which I find to be quite fantastic in these awesome medieval city builders, such as Banished, Farthest Frontier, and now Manor Lords. Well, hello again. Good to see you all here. We have a lot to discuss in terms of the options to feed your people in this game, serving as somewhat of a tutorial in terms of farming and also showing off some of the things currently available in the game. Now, of course, this is a demo version, so a lot of things like some of the development things for your city, which you can spend tech points and whatnot on developing certain uh, aspects of your town, like crop uh, effect effectiveness or production or whatnot, is not yet currently in the game, but... We're getting there, and it will be soon when this game is released, and I can't wait. But for now, let's take our first look at some of the things involved with farming. So if you're thinking about trying out the demo, or if you like the game in general, or if you are playing the demo and you want to learn a little bit more, here's what I've discovered so far, and let me know what you know down below in the comments section for all things related to food, farming, flora, and fauna, and of course any other helpful tips that you think me or anyone else watching could definitely benefit from. So, oh, we want to get into a little bit of farming, don't we? Yeah, it's going to be quite interesting, actually, to farm in this game, as there's quite a few different types of uh, grains that we can choose from in order to not only make bread, but also to make beer. So let's take a look at some of that stuff now. So right in front of us, we have a few farm fields here. It is now spring of, uh, I think, our fourth or fifth year in the game, and things are going quite well. We've got ourselves uh, the spring season where we can do a lot of... Um, Farming and plowing, as it says, plowing is quick for summer harvest, uh, plowing for quick summer harvest as possible. So that's something that we can do. Right now we're growing emmer, which is essentially like wheat in a few of these places. And if we take a look here under construction, we can kind of take a look at the fertility of some of these crops. And you can see it varies based on what we're growing. But with a few years of crop rotation, these fertilities will change and get better over time. So, for example, we have an emmer field here and we have a flax field here. And then we have two emmer fields here. Right now we can only grow flax, emmer, and barley. So those are what we're going to focus on for now. But mostly we're trying to get our bread storage up. So that way we're, of course, churning away at the windmill by doing all of that. So we built a few farm fields here. It looks like we have four. And we have a farm here where we have people employed. Right now it's just two, so we'll have to increase those numbers. But we're just doing a little demonstration here, so it doesn't really matter too much about our setup. But we're just going to talk mostly about production chains. So people from the farm are set to an unlimited work area. So they'll work any field in, well, in this entire region. So if you can kind of see here, this whole area of Raptoria, anywhere that there's a farm in this region, they'll work in. So if we happen to build a field somewhere up here, They'll go and work up there, that kind of thing. So um, anyway, let's go ahead and focus now on some of the farm building aspects. So a farm is built very easily uh, by just literally clicking on the farm and plopping it down. It costs currently uh, four timber and one tool. And then it'll allow for, I think, 12 workers to be able to harvest all the fields. They can also plant uh, the fields and also threshing, which is basically taking the stalks of wheat, bringing it back here, and then essentially beating the grain out of it in order to then take those grains and bring it up to the windmill where it's then turned into flour. So that's kind of a production chain from field to farm to windmill to then the communal oven over here, which then turns all of that into bread, which employs three people as well. You can kind of see them working there. Um, almost it seems like one windmill that's fully working the year round can uh, be fueling two communal ovens. If we take a look up here, we have 134 flour, and that is going to last a long time in terms of its production. It's going to take a long time to produce all that. So uh, we have 43 meat, 4 berries, and 46 bread. So in addition to the farm fields here, buying us a little bit of time for making bread are two hunting camps that are also hunting wild animals that are found in the forest. So nearby, we've set the uh, limit to harvest no more than 15 remaining, so they'll be able to harvest typically from 40 is what these wild animal numbers start at. So this is like 40 deer. We'll hunt most of them aside from 15 and then let the population regrow. And so they'll kind of uh, be turned on and off as time goes on. And of course, that is an alternative food source as well as some animals over here. Going back and forth will allow us to um, then be able to buy some time to grow some other stuff. In addition to that, we also have a forager over here. The forager has just built near the berries up here and they should be able to harvest these I believe all the way up until autumn so spring and summer berries can be gathered 
and then by the time uh, autumn comes around, they decay and can no longer be harvested, so you can take this group and assign them to another task. So we have berries being gathered, we have bread being made, we have meat being gathered, but also we have little gardens, little farms at our town. So right now I'm using a um, trading post to be able to import tools. So I'm asking uh, from the money that we're generating from taxes and other things, our regional wealth, to be able to buy tools at uh, six silver per tool. So we're trying to buy five at a time. It looks like uh, the merchants that come through uh, randomly are dropping off one or two at a time. And so now I'm taking each of these little houses here uh, that we can construct and turning them into little farm fields. Now that's all based on how large they are. So when we go to build a house, we can almost turn it into a, a farm field uh, by just basically planning out the plot a little bit in advance. So if we make it big enough, like this, you can see the little plus sign above the houses allow for us to put an additional plot there behind them, but without, then they can't. So for some of these houses here that we made a little bit bigger, we can actually put a chicken coop or a goat shed here so the serfs or the peasants who work here or live here can do a multitude of different jobs. So we can actually have chickens, which will produce eggs, not meat. And we also have goat shed, which will produce milk and no meat. So that's something that we can actually do as kind of a passive income, although it'll take either gold, rather silver to do. But also we need to import the animal from the livestock trading post. So once we, we build the livestock trading post, we can buy more oxen, which will help us to transport things around the city a lot faster and also sheep and lambs, so that way we can, of course, make wool and other things too, but they might also eat some of the things that we're producing from the fields, so, like, for example, uh, maybe perhaps the fallow fields they can eat from. I haven't gotten that far just yet. I have a lot more experiments to do, but that's something that I want to unlock over time and figure out exactly how that functions. Now, another thing to consider in this game is the beer production and also pastures, so uh, the sheep farm works just kind of like how the regular farm does in terms of uh, building a sheep farm and building a pasture that work together. So the sheep will essentially stay at the sheep farm and then they'll go out to pasture whenever it's time to eat. And then in the winter months, the uh, sheep will be able to be tended to by employees that work there and uh, might be able to bring over things like water or food that they need in order to take care of them during the winter months. Wow, look at all that rain. That is absolutely gorgeous. Now another thing to consider is that we are building over here a malt house and uh, I haven't yet finished the production chain of beer but essentially I do believe that there will be things like hops in the future as you can see over on the right side if you, under, if you look under commodities item 166 or item ID underscore 166 I believe that's hops and uh, under, under that there's actually uh, a barrel and under that there's actually beer and below those there's uh, above those there's also ale. And there's also herbs and some other things here. So these all might be things that are uh, going to make other types of drinks. So we have ale, we have beer. Uh, there could be perhaps in the future, uh, maybe we could make orchards and then we could have a cider production chain, which would be fantastic. But anyway, we need people working at the malt house. And we also need a brewery, which is also under this tab too for uh, industry. Uh, malt house and then a brewery. So that will turn malt into ale. And then either we can sell that from our trading post under the, uh, I think it's under the food tab, or maybe it's under a commodity. There it is, ale, under commodity. Or we can sell it at our tavern up here. So that'll be all kind of a part of the farming tier. And that'll be something to get your town a little bit larger, as one of the goals is to eventually provide entertainment, so quality of drinks at the nearest tavern. So right now we're not serving drinks, but... Uh, with a little bit more work, we can get this building up to Tier 2. So it kind of works like how it does in Anno 1800, or like how it does in, um, well, many many of the uh, Emperor games, or Pharaoh, or the uh, Sierra City Builders, where we need to provide certain types of goods before the upgrade can take place. So in this case, uh, farming is a lot of this, actually. Uh, food, of course, through farming. Clothing, of course, through flax and leather, so hunting and uh, we can also do yarn too so you can gather a uh, cloth by making flax into linen at a weaver and then deliver that to a shop where it then, then can be delivered to your people uh, in order to make their own clothing you can also of course deliver leather by providing pelts to the tanner from hunting and then selling that at the clothing shop and then yarn of course by having sheep which can then be sheared 
and then woven into wool uh, yarn and then provided your people as well. So that would uh, be two, one of the two sources that you'd need. So here we could probably get away by doing leather and cloth fairly easy by growing flax and also hunting. Entertainment will be the last thing then by pro providing beer and faith, of course, is just by building a church, which is something completely different. So now we have another tool in store for us. So we're going to pick a house that uh, we can expand a little bit. Can't necessarily see which house it is by clicking on some of these here. But we can try to click on some of the bigger houses, such as this one, which can be upgraded to have a vegetable garden. All right, construction started. So... Uh, people will come out and start uh, tilling the land. Now, I'm not sure exactly in this game if the size of a house increases the uh, yield of the field behind it. So, in other words, if we wanted to, we could almost make a very large farmhouse. And I'll show you an example here. If we can do it. So, if we can do this, we could almost get away by having one house. Or in this case, two. But if you see the layout here, would this house here provide a lot more carrots than this house, for example? Not sure, but that's something I'm going to have to discover. But under food, that's another way to produce that food. So we have meat, which is provided from hunting and or possibly the culling of animals. Perhaps there's a way at those sheep and goat farms to be able to set a limit. <clears throat> so that way those animals will be harvested earlier, if you know what I mean. We also have berries from foraging, bread from the production chain I showed off. And then I'm not sure what some of these other ones are. I'm not sure what item 173 and 152 are. So if you think you know, let me know. There's also salted meat, which of course we can have salt mines. So that's another food source for us. Eggs from chicken and then milk from the goats. So a few more things that we can eventually uh, produce and or gather. Now again, there's rye in the game. There's barley and there's also emmer. So, of course, the rye will just provide a different type of uh, fertility. <clears throat> and you can actually see it here, too. Yeah, we have uh, rye fertility, which is very hardy and would grow perfectly in this valley. We have barley, which wouldn't grow so well except for over here, but unfortunately we have our animals. We have flax, of course. But, again, not great. But we can always increase the fertility by doing years and years of fallow and then eventually harvesting. And then emmer, too. And also underground water, although I don't see underground water being any sort of factor in the fertility. It seems to just be where you can build wells, which kind of dictates how close you can build towns to certain things. Although one well here has been able to uh, provide most of the uh, town with water. It's actually right on the other side over here. But anyway, the wells themselves don't seem to be a factor. Here's another one as well. As well, haha. Uh -huh. But yeah, they don't seem to be necessary for anything other than the citizens. So, in other words, the well's not needed to produce bread. The well's not needed to uh, water farm fields or anything like that. So it's just used for the people. But in this case, flour equals bread with no yeast, no, wa uh, no water. Interesting. Very cool, I must say. All right, now additionally with food we can also trade for the food so we can actually import some of the things if we don't have them ourselves so any of these food types we can import or export for money as you can see some of the uh, more spendier ones here like bread for eight which is a crazy number also salted meat which we can uh, export for two but we can import for eight it seems so pretty ex expensive there too so bread is a very good food source to export to our uh, people or at least to the region very profitable indeed we can also export materials, so through our hunting we can get some other things, like the leather and the pelts there. So that'll give us some money to buy other things. Oh, it looks like there's wood and firewood here. Looks like we can import wood to actually make a forester. Speaking of farming, you can replant trees, and that will, of course, give you an almost unlimited uh, support, uh, supply of wood. So keep in mind that that's another option as well. You can tree farm in the game. And just taking a look at anything else worth mentioning under some of these tabs. Flax, barley, and wheat. Stone and tools. And some of the commodities might be locked to a region. For example, there is the ability to, uh, of course, have uh, bees in the game. So you can actually make, I think you can make honey through that. But of course, also beeswax for making candles. But then you see salt deposits here, so that's how you'll get some of those... Uh, 
food sources like salted meats, and then of course more animals around for you to hunt, where I don't see them often going much over 40, and if they do, it's pretty rare. Berries over here too. We can expand to other regions based on our influence. So, <clears throat> with a certain number of influence, we can actually expand and claim other territories, and that will allow us to expand our influence. Now we have 1,400, so if we wanted to, uh, let's say go over here for uh, the extra stone, or if we wanted to go north for the extra land, uh, we could claim this territory, although I believe it's not available in the demo, unfortunately. All right, cool. Oh, wow, look at that. Oxen doing their job. Now, another thing as well for the uh, import is highly recommended to get multiple oxen as soon as you can. If you build a trade depot and a livestock trading post, those will work together really well to generate funds to be able to buy uh, additional oxen. That's going to be a highly recommended thing, especially when you go to build the farm. And some other buildings that take like eight wood or so, like the church and uh, the windmill too, which is a little tedious to build, but not too crazy for sure. You can always uh, move your labor forces around too. There's also the enable idle laborers section, which allows them to uh, look for other jobs or gain different jobs based on how busy things are. Kind of a seasonal thing, but you still have to monitor it a little bit. That's something that's certainly a good thing to inspect. And of course, to also centralize your stalls around your farms too. For example, we have our farm here. Windmill here. And our little market, our uh, little oven here next to the market. Things are looking pretty cleared out, but we certainly have a lot of food now. 42 meat, one berry, 41 bread, and lots more food on the way for the year, especially with the autumn coming eventually, with it being April. Very soon we will have ourselves another winter. And this allows us to gather things like uh, fuel and focus on some other stuff. Additionally, we have a granary nearby that is uh, fully stocked. Looks like we might need to build more than one of that. That stores not only completed food, but also raw food stores like, for example, wheat and grain themselves. So it might be a good idea to build multiple granaries at the same time. Maybe one by your hunting posts and maybe one by your, um, maybe your mill and some other stuff in order to store flour as it moves in between and also store bread before it's brought to market as your market stalls do have limited storage of 15 15 bread for example so with uh, 39 bread in storage probably at the actual oven itself yep it's going to need to be moved by the food stall or by the granary in order to store it or to sell it so look for those bottlenecks try to inspect everything that you can and adjust your workforce accordingly you can always have idle workers Ooh, looks like we paid our royal taxes. Huzzah. But anyway, that's all for me for today. So thanks again, everybody, for watching. Let me know if you have any other questions, comments, or interesting things that you learned about the farming in this game. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back for more about uh, more different types of things. Let me know what you'd like to see or what you have questions about in the future. Keep in mind you can force early harvest and or burn your crops too. And also, of course, the fields have storage for themselves when the harvest season comes. Lots to talk about, lots to learn, but I highly encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell to all, and join our live streams where we have giveaways for Manor Lords and more. Glory to Raptoria down below in the comment section if you're ready to win and would like to have a copy of Manor Lords and or many other building games for yourself. But that's all for now. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.